All right, Chris, you and I are going to take as many snaps in Thursday's preseason opener against the New England Patriots as Bryce Young. Let's do it. Let's go. I'm ready. Suit up, baby. Let's I'm go. I'm ready for that preseason action. Let's get those clipboards ready. Let's get the sucker started. Get dialed in, Panthers fans. Here comes an in-depth look at your team. Exclusive interviews. Locker room insight. Ready. Let's huddle up. Let's just do it, okay? For Panthers Playbook, driven by Carolina Ford dealers. Here are your hosts, Dennis Cox and Chris Lee. Welcome to an extra bonus episode of Panthers Playbook, brought to you by, sponsored by Carolina Ford dealers. With Ford F-150 on your team, it's game on. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. That's Chris Lee. Dennis Cox here with you. All right, Chris, we're going to do this extra episode. And obviously tomorrow night, preseason game number one on the road at the New England Patriots. But Bryce Young's not playing. And I don't think I agree with this decision, Chris. I Bryce Young needs as many reps as possible. I don't know if I like this. I was always um, staring on the side of, of caution anyway when it comes to Bryce Young. Sure. And I kind of thought, get him a series or two, mm -hmm. and then we can put in, you know, uh, Jack Plummer, Jake Luton, and, and those guys. Um, yeah. And and I want I want to see him with Deontay Johnson. I want to see him, you know, with Xavier Leggett's not playing, but I want to see him with Chuba Hover. I want to see him behind this new offensive line. Yeah, I want to see him with Jatavian San Sanders. And I know that, um, you know, we're not going to see. Uh, everything if he only plays a series or two um, because it's not like you can empty out your playbook <laughs> in in that amount of time sure. um but you know i kind of wanted to at least uh see like you know also is he getting the ball out in 2.7 seconds or under um what kind of freedoms does bryce young have because we know that he was kind of restricted last year and it feels like uh you know this particular scheme and system is tailored towards his strengths so you know, I wanted to at least have that unless they feel like it's at their competitive advantage to not do it so that um, the world is a little bit more surprised. But I would hope that during this preseason, he gets at least, um, you know, two or three series between uh, the next two games. So at least we can go into that first game against the Saints on the road with something, something. Just something. Something. So last year he played in two series in each of the three preseason games. So he played six series totals, what he did yeah. last year, which I thought with, again, new head coach, all those new position, you know, that you talked about and all the new personnel, you want to try and get as many live reps as possible. Yeah. Try to get as many live reps as possible. And I look at it not just because of Bryce. I look at it from the Dave Canales perspective too. If I'm a first-time head coach and I'm also calling plays, I want to do as many live reps as possible leading up to the regular season with the guy I'm going to be calling plays to. So, like, for example, I want to be make sure that Bryce hears my communication clearly in his headset, that he understands what it is that we're trying to do. So after a series, he comes off the field. We can talk with the Bryce. Okay, what did you see on that throw? All right, Deontay, what did you see on that throw? All right, offensive line, what did you see with the the guy the up front? All right, this is where we need to slide the protection, do all these different kinds of things. And Deontay Johnson can say, like, hey, if he's pressing me like this, I might bend the route this way, whatever it might yeah. be. That communication only comes from live reps. Right. Against another team in an actual game type setting. There's only so much you can accomplish in a practice against yourself. I understand next week that, that they have the, the joint practices with the Jets. Well, guess what? They had that last year too. He needs, I think for Dave Canales, I think he needs as many reps calling plays and, and also just managing the sideline as a head coach for the first time. You want to do that with your number ones out there as much as possible. So I think for me, Dave Canales needs it just as much as Bryce Young does. Well, I was going to bring that up as far as uh, the, the Jets and that joint practice that they're going to have next week. Um, I, I think that maybe – Maybe Canales is looking at it like, uh, you know, this is our first chance to actually see him against another team. Mm -hmm. It's a, in a controlled environment. We can see what's off, you know, before we actually put him in front of another team for live reps. Sure. And so, you know, maybe that's the thought process there. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to stay as neutral as possible before we see actual results. Yeah. Right. Like, I, I don't want to uh, blame Canales or to come off as, you know, um, I guess, skeptical or cynical on what the Pan Carolina Panthers are doing based on their past when, you know, two guys who are at the helm have, well, 
I guess Dan Morgan kind of does. But, you know, Dave Canales at the helm has nothing to do with what happened in the past. Um, and so now it's, it's like I want to, you know, wait and to judge him based off of what he does. So while I do somewhat disagree with him not playing, um, I won't be upset if he ends up playing uh, at least some in the in the paid in the Jets game, excuse me, and some in the uh, the Bills game. And if we don't see him at all in the preseason, mm, bad. I'm gonna worry because oh, yeah. what are you saying about your offensive line? that your starters can't hold up for Bryce Young for a couple of series. Just a couple. Yeah. And if you if you're that if you're going to be that run heavy, make it run heavy. <laughs> you, yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? Like you can also call plays in a particular way to protect Bryce Young. Um but ultimately I think we also need to see the operation. We need to see, you know, yep. what that looks like and and I feel like they probably are going to need to to see what that looks like. So I don't know. Hopefully it, it's, you know, it starts against the Jets uh, in, in that joint practice, but hopefully we actually see something against the Jets uh, in that preseason game next week. Well, preseason game for number one against the New England Patriots, there's a lot of guys that are not going to be playing due to injury. I think I know Damian Lewis is battling a shoulder injury, so I yeah. doubt he's going to be playing. Xavier Leggett, we know, is not going to be playing. Yeah. I mean, gosh, how many tight ends are they missing right now? Stephon Sullivan's on injured reserve. Yeah. Um, Ian Thomas may be back for week one with the calf injury. I think Tommy Tremble is set to return kind of at basically at the end of the week after this preseason game with a hamstring injury, but they're basically down to like Jatavian Sanders and a bunch of other guys that they just signed off the street, you know, within the last week is, is who they have at tight end right now. This could be why this yeah, could be I, why Dave Canales made the decision. You know what? And I, I here's the thing. I see that side too. It's like, you know what? The yeah. dude got sacked 60 plus times last season. If everything <laughs> around him is like, hey, look, like yeah. one of our starting guards, and like, you know, we saw Chandler Zavala get crushed last year at times. So he's probably going to start at left guard in this preseason game. Taylor Moten's been getting some vet days and stuff here and there. Maybe Austin Corbett gets a vet day. You know, that with the preseason games, like, you know what? Ah. Maybe not the circumstances are really good for him right now with a, with a preseason game. Let's not get him hit any more than what we saw last season. I totally get that side of things yeah. too, Chris. I really do. Um, one thing I've been really like paying attention to the things that Canales has been saying, and I'm trying to pick up things on like who can potentially make the team, trying to basically read the tea leaves and things like that. And mm -hmm. you brought up the name Chandler Zavala. He gave him some praise lately. Yeah. On what he's been doing um, correctly and how he's been kind of stepping up. Um, I will say, you know, maybe this might be wild. Maybe. This might be wild. Wild. But maybe we should give Chandler a little bit of grace because it's not like first last last year was his, his uh, first year in the NFL. Mm -hmm. First time seeing NFL uh, defenses. But. Also, everybody else on that line struggled along with him. Oh, and he he's coming in it. as a rookie and and struggling like that. And we also understand what was going on between coaches and things like that. Like you had coaches who weren't on the same page, didn't have the same philosophies on things and, and giving different messages. I want to see what he, he looks like and others look like with uh, this particular group who are all on one accord, who are all here. Right here. Who are all here? Right here. They're all here. Right there. Aki. Right there. I want to see what what he looks like with everything aligned. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also been listening to him too. We we had this conversation last week about who's going to make it at at wide receiver. Yeah. Mir Smith Marset been stepping up. Jonathan yeah. Mingo's been stepping up, and it looks like there's room for a, a six person, which could be Terrace Marshall, could be David Moore, could be somebody else too. Um. You know, we'll end up seeing what, what happens with that, but it feels like things are starting to shape up a little bit there that a lot of the real battles are going to happen in as far as, like, who's going to be the backups to linebackers, who's going to be the backups to uh, to DBs, and who's going to be backups on the defensive line, who's going to be the backups on the offensive line. It feels like the, the skill position is pretty much taken care of. So we know, that, we know that Lee Getz not going to play – with Bryce Young playing, I'm not playing. I'm, I doubt Thielen. I doubt Deontay Johnson are to be playing at wide receiver. So guess what? Mango, Amir Smith, Marset, Terrace Marshall Jr., all those up. other guys that you mentioned, you're going to get a ton of reps, a ton of reps, and a ton of playing time. And guess what? You get a chance to go out there and earn it. And as of right now, the depth chart, the first one listed for the Carolina Panthers, 
had Jonathan Mingo as that third wide receiver mm-hmm. with with Johnson and with Thielen with Leggett right behind that and uh, Mir Smith Marset. I think that's Jarris because Marshall of Leggett's in- injury, though. I will say possibly, that. possibly, possibly, you know, but because he wasn't injured, I, I think Leggett is uh, in there in the ones. I mean, but from by all accounts, and you and I have been to multiple preseason practices this season, and. Jonathan Mingo's looked good. Terrace Marshall's has. made some really nice plays. And I actually really like what Amir Smith-Marset was doing, especially what he can bring in the return game as well. His versatility, I think, is going to add a lot uh, to the team. So, I mean, there's there's some competition battles, like you said, for depth, depth spots on the team. And, and Thursday could be a real opportunity for those guys to separate themselves from each other. I'm excited just to see uh, who ends up doing that, who flashes on yeah. screen. Um the, the part that I'm the most worried about is now, like, outside linebacker, bro. Like, you know, we, we signed Kamiko Ture. Just for and he's hurt. He's done. IR yeah. Immediately. Like, bro, what's going to happen? Like, call Marquise Haynes back. Call, you know, um, what's my man who uh, who tried out, who was with the Jaguars, uh, who had 69 sacks? Like, nice. call call him back. Oh, Yannick Ngakwe. Yeah. Like, like let, let's, see what, let's see what happens um, because, you know, we need to – we need to get some some guys there who can you know set that edge, but most importantly get after the quarterback. And I, I know that they've been praising DJ Johnson. Yeah, they have, he's listed as a starter right now. But there's a reason why they're looking. Oh yeah, and there's a reason why they're where, why they're open about looking. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know if if DJ DJ Wanham was there, I'm sure they'd still look because they're going to need sure. some some backups. Uh, but it, it's clear that Johnson and Caleb on chase on are playing well, but they may not be the guys who are going to separate you uh, and, and, and cause a lot of damage on that, on that front line. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're going to need somebody to do that until DJ one gets back. And Caleb Von Jason's build isn't set. Isn't someone who will set the edge on a run play. Like he is all like, he's all thighs, legs, but in terms of like his build, hey, he's not man. very thick upper body. That dude is, built like a hockey player uh, listen all below it, the waist we me and dennis were at practice mm-hmm. <laughs> and we, yes, i was just we like were. yo yo look at caleb von chase on bro yeah like, look at his build like oh, pause yeah. like not like that right but when you're somebody like i used to wrestle right in high school mm-hmm. and i played little league uh football and if you're an athlete and i used to be a pro wrestler as well when you're an athlete a lot of times, especially in the contact sport, you judge how strong somebody is, not by their upper body, mm-hmm. but how their lower body looks. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if they have the the big thighs and, and you know, just big down there. Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and Caleb on chase on, you can see why he has the, the athletic profile just physically. Oh, yeah. Of a, of a first rounder. Oh, right? like a speed edge rusher. hundred percent. I hope he's able to put it together and you now and, and maybe like clearly strength is not his problem. It might be uh, it might be technique, mm-hmm. but we'll have to see. And and that's that's one of the things I'll be looking for uh, in this first preseason game, because I want to see what ends up happening uh, with these different players and, and who actually separates themselves. But that's one of those guys I'm looking at like, hey, what are you going to do? Are you going to separate yourself? Because we're going to need you. There's going to be opportunities there. Uh, on that outside linebacker position. Do you think any of the vet defensive players like Derek Brown, Ashawn Robinson, Jadavian Clowney, do you think any of those guys actually play on Thursday? It'll be cool to see them. Uh, Jadavian Clowney, no. Um, yeah. But I, mean, I, I, I doubt it, we see I doubt we see those three guys I mentioned. I, I highly doubt we see it. I would like to see Derek Brown for maybe uh, a series, a couple of snaps. Um, but I feel like those are the guys that you can save. Yeah. Um, I want to see Josie Jewell and Shaq together for a series. I don't think Shaq's going to gonna play. Like. I don't think Shaq's going to play with the hamstring. I doubt he's going to play. He's missing I don't time. think he'll play this week, but I'm talking about at some point during the, uh, oh, the yeah. preseason. Yes. I, I want to see um, I want to see those two because it feels like this could be a sleeper linebacker combo mm-hmm. in the NFL, right? Like, you know, Josie Jewell's had a couple big plays in, in practice, getting an interception, uh, you know, team teammates praising him for how he uses his eyes and how he basically will the uh the interceptions he wills the the pass breakups and things like that and um you know he's somebody who had his best year in the nfl in this system uh when uh Ejiro evero was his defensive coordinator in denver and you have more guys in the back end 
look, safety uh, DBs last year actually did a really good job last year. They were they were they weren't a bad spot on this team. They mm-hmm. they did a great job. But now you have guys who have had success in this particular scheme who are there now. Um, you know, really everything is about depth. If people yeah. get injured, who's going to step up? And I think those are the real question marks. I know defensively we're going to see a lot of Trevin Wallace, rookie linebacker, the third rounder out of Kentucky, Claude mm-hmm. Cherilis. We're going to see him, Chandler Wooten. I mean, there's just, there's going to be a battle for that fourth linebacker spot. You know, after Jewel, after Tom, uh, after Shaq Thompson, and after Trevin Wallace, that fourth inside linebacker spot obviously have to be good on special teams. But who knows? What we're going to see. I know Michael Barrett got a little bit nicked up uh, recently as well. So who knows what he's going to be able to bring if he's going to be able to play? I don't know, but. I'm excited to see what some of these guys could do, Chris, tomorrow. And that's the reason why we're going to have another Panthers playbook for you all tomorrow, wow, Thursday, wow. Thursday after a preseason game, number one against the New England Patriots. Uh, which, by the way, Chris, you might be on storm coverage. I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> Debbie rolling um, through here. You know, Debbie is rolling up. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. I think if I am on storm co- coverage, it will be during the day. So I should have okay. time to sit down at night and and watch the game and and – you know, kind of be all in on this. Just be totally here with it, you know, right Just there. right here. In front of the television, right here. Right there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but, yeah, everybody stay safe with Debbie, mm-hmm. you know. So. Everyone stay safe with Debbie. Uh, but also make sure you subscribe here on Panthers Playbook, brought to you by, sponsored by Carolina Ford Dealers, wherever you go, whatever you do, with the power and technology of Ford F-150 on your team. It's game on. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Again, hey, we'll have man. an episode for you. I drive a Ford and Mullins. When we pull in that tractor and you get off and you hop in your truck, we're getting a Ford, you know. Hey, yes, up, uh, yes, up. Uh. You know, we haul a lot of corn in it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time.